Awesome. That was fun. Thank you for just letting me get that out of my system. <laughs> Having a great time. I feel like, uh, man, following Jesus is the best thing going. And it's a lot of fun. And I love, the Lord loved us enough that he gave us Jesus. And then he loved us a little more and gave us this really wonderful family. So it's been good hanging with you this morning. I'm looking forward to getting into the scriptures. Let me tell you, we're taking fun to a whole new level. On your way out, uh, we're passing out six packs uh, of invite cards it's a pathway church, and so the ushers will have those as you go out. We just want to make it hard for people to hit hell from Mobile, okay? And so grab one of these. You can invite one for each day of the week, Monday through Saturday, and let's, let's bring somebody next week. God's working on us. Why not let God work on them as well, okay? So let's, let's make sure that we do that. Stand with me. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Jesus, you're the Lord of this house. We honor you here, and we just simply ask that you would do your work here among us today. Don't wait until next week. Don't let us put you off until tomorrow. We say, why not us? Why not here? And why not now? Do your good work in us. And we will thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a great big hand clap as you grab a seat. <laughs> Kelly and I were uh, living in a house that had some construction problems. And we didn't know what was wrong. We knew something was wrong. We, it was a brand new house. We had built it, and we just could tell something was wrong. And, you know, you got, have to wait for that new house, new car smell to wear off to really kind of figure it out. But, you know, it is that, that smell of a new car. Isn't that wonderful? Those polymers and plastics, and you're just like, you can't drive after that, but uh, you're weaving and that sort of thing. But after that started wearing off, we thought something's wrong with our house. Come to find out our walls were emitting carbonyl sulfide, which when they got into contact with water turned into sulfuric acid. Bad for our eyes, bad for central nervous system. It was a mess. It was a mess. And uh, we, it really got exaggerated when a storm came through and we had some water intrusion around some windows. And so we said, okay, we got to deal with this. I was in the office and some folks came over to check out the house. I get a phone call from Kelly in the office and she says, is it okay if they open the windows? And I thought, that's kind of a low-level decision that I'm being brought into here. Uh, I said, sure, have them open the windows, that's fine. She's like, no, but is it okay if they open the windows? I'm like, why are you asking me if it's okay to open the windows, close the windows? I don't care, I don't care. And she said, no, is it okay to have them open the windows? It got into an argument, the kind of argument that I will end up sleeping on the couch and maybe eating frozen pizza for a couple days. <laughs> it was almost that kind of argument until we got home. Dave, we got home and I figured out what she was saying was, was it okay for them to cut the drywall open around the windows? Sometimes what you say is not what the other person sees. Some people can see things really good and some, sometimes we just don't see so well. I want to talk to you today about seeing it. I want you to see it. Say that with me. See it. See it. I want you to see it today. I want you to see what God is doing, where God is taking us, where the Lord is taking us. I want you to look past the subterfuge, past the chaos of your life. Look up over the horizon and see what it is that the Lord wants to do. He's looking for people who will cooperate with him. Helen Keller said, the only thing worse than being blind is having, no, having sight but no vision. I want you to see today with me. I want you to see for your life, for your business, for your church, for your family. Do you have a vision for your life? Do you? It's really easy to get in that rat's race of life. You know, to be like a hamster on a wheel, just going. It's like you, you wake up, work, eat, sleep, wake up, work, eat, sleep. And it's just like repeat, repeat, repeat. And you get stuck down in the weeds and you can't look up over the horizon. I want you to know, while we have things to go through, God has a good plan for us to get to. I want you to start with the end in mind. I want you to see what it is that the Lord is wanting to do in us. See it and be it. Come on, say that. See it and be it. You can't be it if you won't see it. If you can't see where God is taking you, you will never be there. Now, some of us are stuck down in it. We're stuck in it, and you're like, well, look at me. How in the world is God ever going to do anything with me in this condition? I don't know what your condition is. Everybody's always got a condition. Have you ever been around somebody that they always want to talk about their condition? You talk to them, it's like being around Eeyore. Their tail has always fallen off, and they're a little mopey, you know, and you're just down in it. You got to get, sometimes you just got to shake yourself 
free of that stuff so that you can see what it is that God is wanting to do. And I want to just tell you today that your present condition is no indication of your future potential in Christ Jesus. It just isn't. It isn't. It isn't. You might be going through a separation. You might, de- be, you might be dealing with job loss. You might have a health issue. Look, your present condition is no indication of Christ Jesus. It's no indication of your future potential in Christ Jesus. None. So we can walk like who we are, not what our circumstance dictates. Man, pick your head up. Square your shoulders back. Don't you know who I am? You, don't you know who I am? I'm a child of God. No, you're broke. Yeah, I'm broke, but I'm a child of God. I'm broke right now, but I'm a child. I'm sick right now, but I'm a child of God. It's just a temporary thing. God is bringing me through this. And so don't mind me. You can dress for where you are. I'm not. I'm dressing for where I'm going. Why do you walk with that kind of confidence? Because I know who Jesus is. I know who he is in me. I know what he's working on in my life. So it's not, it's not pride. It's not arrogance. It's just trust in, it's trust in the Lord, man. It's just trust in him. I'm going with him. Our confidence can't be in us. It's got to be in him. And when our confidence is in him, we can lift our head up and we can look on over, we can look up on over the horizon. So you got to see it. You got to be it. You got to know it. You got to walk in it. Then you attain it. You don't attain it first and then it informs your confidence. No, you start out when you don't have anything, when you don't got jack, you know, when you have nothing at all. Like you may be eating on your dining room table might be a piece of luggage. But if you have vision for your life, you already know, you know where you're going. You've already been there in your mind and in your heart. Pathway Church, we're going somewhere. God has been so faithful, so good. Not only can we see it in the future, we can see it in the past. And past behavior is the best indicator of future behavior. God has been really good to us, even more confidence that we should have that he's in the future. He's taking care of this and we're walking this thing out. He's going to do some awesome stuff in us. And so I want us to take a look at that. And as we do, I want us to look at a man by the name of Zerubbabel that we can get some confidence from that the Lord who is, begins a thing will be faithful to complete it. And we can walk in the same kind of confidence that he had. And we can see what it is the Lord wants us to be. And that's a neat name, isn't it? Zerubbabel. Say that with me. Zerubbabel. I mean, you get a little head shake like Grey Poupon, you know. <laughs> Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was actually, he led the first wave of captives out of Babylon from Babylonian captivity. So Jeremiah chapter 29, that, you know, that wonderful high school graduation scripture for I know the plans that I have for you, that is actually an on-ramp into 70 years of captivity when Babylon destroyed the temple and came in and took people captive. Um, Zerubbabel had been there and he probably before he came out to come back and reestablish Judah and re- to rebuild the temple, he probably worked in the king's palace under the king's service. So think of, when you think of Zerubbabel, think of Daniel and think of the three Hebrew children. This is kind of the same zone. And we also know that he probably was in the king's service not only because he was commissioned to go back out into, Ju- into Judah, but also because he had a a name like Daniel did, a, a, a Chaldee uh, name. You know, Daniel, of course, was Belteshazzar. And then the three Hebrew children were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And then we see in, in uh, Zerubbabel, his name was Sheshbazar. And I love the meaning for this name. It, it actually means joy and tribulation. I love this. Sheshbazar, or Zerubbabel, his present condition was captivity. It was slavery. It was bondage. It was having been ripped out of his homeland. Or maybe he grew up in captivity and had never experienced his homeland. Was leaving his taskmasters and going back to to reestablish his national identity. And when when I think of Zerubbabel, and I think about us, I think about us, I think that we, no matter what we're going through, that we should allow God to inform our face of his promise in our life. Should inform our heart. The way that we live should be an indication of God working in us. I think, here's what I think. I think Pathway's gonna go through it. I think we're gonna go through a mess at some point. I think you're gonna go through a mess at some point. 
You're going to go through the, uh, an incredible difficulty. When we do, we should be happy warriors. You know what I'm saying? Like we should let joy be in the middle of tribulation, in the middle of difficulty. Right? So you can say, man, I'm tired. Man, the devil whooped up on me a little bit, but I'm still smiling. I'm still smiling. My kids may be giving me fits, but I'm still smiling. God's got this. I know that if I will train up a child in the way he should go, when he's old, he won't depart from it. It might be a little bit nasty right now. God's got this thing. God's got, my, our confidence is not in what we're able to do right now in the moment. Our confidence is in the fact that God is writing the story. It, it is a joy in, there's a joy in tribulation. When we look at Zerubbabel and we look at this story, I, I want us to kind of hit pause and I, I want us to talk about seeing. I want us to talk about vision. Vision is really very simply what you see. It's what you see. Some people look and see, they only see difficulty. Only see difficulty. But we're people. We're gospel people. We're people of the promise. We're people of the Holy Spirit. We're people, we're people of God. We're people that may be in captivity. You know, I mean, there's a vote taking place this week. And you know what? We're going to vote. We're going to honor the Lord. And we're going to love one another. And then when all of that is done, no matter how it shakes out, we're people of promise. Whether we're in, we're in captivity or we're in freedom, it really doesn't matter. I mean, do what, do, be honorable in the way that you live. Be honorable. Pray for your leaders. Do all of those things. But I'm telling you, man, if God can bless his people under Nebuchadnezzar, he can bless us under anybody. <laughs> right? And, and so there's joy in that. When you look at what you're facing, don't just see your situation. See who God has called us to be. See where he's taking it. This is what vision is. Vision is what you see. Leadership is taking people from where they are to where they need to be. And when you can see where you need to go, then you can bring people along. Then we've got that movement. It's not just about us plowing through it, but it's about God's people coming through. So don't see things for what they are, but see them for what they can be. See them for what God has promised, for who God is. Now, Zerubbabel comes into Judah, and he's going to rebuild the temple. And it's always exciting. The grand opening is always exciting. You've got ribbons, people are dressed nice, maybe some trumpets, or today maybe you got a, maybe like the high school band is out there with the drum line, and there's like a stuffed chicken over here on the side, and you got all that stuff going on. It's really great. And that's basically what happened with Zerubbabel, but two years of work, of laying the foundation, and then it stopped. It stopped because it was difficult. How many of you know building anything is difficult? If it was easy, everybody would be doing it, right? So it's spectacular, it's very, but it's difficult, it's very difficult. And so they got into it, it was very difficult, they were having challenges, and then the construction stops. And then the prophet of the Lord began to push back on people, and because this is what happens, they begin to find, have pushback, they begin to have some difficulty. We're going to have it, we're going to have it, at some point you're going to be upset at me, at some point you're going to be upset at your spouse, at some point, you're going to be upset with your employer. You're going to be, life is going to, it's going to be difficult. And a lot of people just throw up their hands and quit. They'll go, oh man, I just want to say that right now while things are really good, right? I just want to say it now. But that's not what builders do. Builders build and you press on until you come to completion, until you finish it. But the people of God, they, they quit. And, and, and then in um, Haggai, he presses back on them because he noticed that the people of the Lord quit building the temple and they begin to build their own homes. They begin to focus on their ne own needs, taking care of themselves. And this is what he says. He says, is it time for your, you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses in this temple to lie in ruins? No, the problem wasn't that they lived in paneled houses. How many of you like that you live in a house? How many of you like the fact that you're wealthy? Yeah. We're filthy rich. No, I mean like filthy rich. Just go ahead and say it out loud. It'll feel really good. Say, I'm filthy rich. Go ahead and say it. Somebody just needs to own that. Just go ahead and bring it. I'm filthy rich, right? We're rich. We're wealthy. We are the wealthiest on the planet. We are incredibly wealthy. Look how fine clothes you have. Earrings. You arrived in vehicles. We've got it good, people. We've got it really good. The problem isn't 
that we've got a good. The problem isn't that we're wealthy. The problem isn't that we have air conditioned. The problem isn't that you have a new car. The problem for these people was that they put their needs before God's needs. That they said, God, I know you're really important and all, but you're number two and I'm number one. See, they thought they had to take care of their needs first before they can honor the Lord. But even Solomon showed that that was not the case. Solomon Solomon built God's house. He built the temple before he built his own house. And don't you know that Solomon was filthy rich? I mean, like, it didn't hurt him. It actually, it, it causes the Lord to bless us. When, here's what I believe. I believe that if we will take care of God's business, he will take care of our business. Pastor, that's a good, that's a good word. It's not my word. That's a scripture. Seek first the kingdom of God and all of these th- things will be added unto you. Man, we can't be putting the cart before the horse. We've got to take care of God's business. I'm not telling you to neglect your family. Take care of your family. Don't abuse your family in the name of the Lord. But I'm saying bless the Lord, put him first, and he will take care of this stuff. Haggai pushed back on them. But they had complaints. The people had complaints. Here were some of the complaints they had. They said that the land was desolate after 70 years of neglect. They said that the work was hard. How many of you know work is hard? They said they didn't have a lot of money. In Haggai chapter 1, verse 6, they also said they didn't have a lot of manpower. They said that hostile enemies resisted the work. How many of you know, anytime you try and do something good, somebody's going to talk trash. They talk trash. And let me, just, let me just hit pause and deal with some stuff, okay? And, and I haven't been here long enough to make this personal, so this is just general, and I just know how people are. Back in the day, at one point, I led a church that was portable. And every Sunday we would set up and tear down. And you know, there's always somebody that wants to talk, criticize, etc. We came up with a saying. We said, the complaint box is in the trailer. In other words, if you're working, you can talk all you want. But if you're just a talker, be a walker. You know, goodbye. We don't have time. Ain't nobody got time for that. In the words of Sweet Brown, right? Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> The work is going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. And there will be people who resist us. There are going to be people who talk trash. They're going to say, I can't believe that you would worship like that. I can't believe that you would give like that. I can't believe that you're down for that. Let me tell you, we're down for it. We're down for it. We're all about Jesus, and we just want to go after him. And we believe it's going to show up in our families. We believe it's going to show up in our business. We believe it's going to show up in every single area of our life. We're going after him. We don't want anything less than the real thing that's what we're going after the hostile enemies resisted the work that was Ezra chapter 4 verses 1 through 5 and then they remembered easier times in Babylon let me just say this there will be a time when you're pioneering that it will be easy for easier for you to be in slavery it will be easier for you to be back in captivity when you leave everything that you know look when you first come to Jesus there will be some things that are comfortable and normal to you, and then you walk away from them. That sin tax was very hard for you to pay, but it was also very good. How many of you know sin is good? You're like, wait, wait, wait a second. No, it's scripture. Sin is good for a season. For a season. Then comes the payday. What is the payday for sin? The wages, the payday for sin is death. So you sin, it feels really great, and then you got bankruptcy, or then you got a prescription, or then you got something else. You know what I'm saying? We're going to deal, we are going to deal with stuff. Let's don't go back to where we came from. Let's don't give up. Let's don't quit. Let's don't turn back. We've come too far to turn back. Bible says any man that puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. That's not who we are. That's not, we've, we, maybe it's old school to talk like that, but we're just going to say old school is cool. It's, It's okay. There's some things that we need to let go of and move on, and there's some things that we never need to let go of. That's one of them. We're going to press on towards that high calling of God in Christ Jesus, and we're not going to stop, and we're we're not going to look back. My hope is that when I get to that finish line, I'm driving a beater, and I just barely limp. I don't want anything left in the gas tank. God, I left it all on the field. I gave it all for you. I don't want to look back. Let's not remember easier times that we used to have. Those, Those are some of the complaints. At the end of the day, great things don't come easily. They just don't. Thomas Edison said this. He said, he said opportunity is, is missed by most people because it is dressed in overalls and looks a lot like work. 
The great things that the Lord is going to do at Pathway, the great things that he's going to do in your life is going to require work and sacrifice and dedication. It's going to require you to give more than you think that you can, to leave more on the field, to give up more influence than you thought that you... Look, if you will give up your influence and your resources, God will say, I can trust you as a steward. You thought you lost your influence, you just doubled it. You thought you lost resources? No, you just got more. We're, we've got to bring, we've got to bring it. We've got to bring what we have to this movement that's being built. The best for God in your family, in your business, in your church. Let's not be distracted by naysayers, by difficult times, by success, by whatever comes. Let's keep our eye focused, fixed on the prize. Let me just go ahead and read in Zechariah chapter 4 about Zerubbabel. Verse, four, verse 1, the Bible says, Then the angel who has been talking with me returned and woke me as though I had been asleep. What do you see now? What, what do you see now? He asked. I answered, I see a solid gold lampstand with a bowl of oil on top of it. Around the bowl are seven lamps, each having seven spouts with wicks. And I see two olive trees, one on each side of the bowl. Then I asked the angel, What are these, my Lord? What do they mean? Don't you know, the angel asked, no, my Lord. Then he said to me, this is what the Lord says to Zerubbabel. It is not by force nor by strength, but by my spirit. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. You see it. You don't know how, to be, how you're going to get there, but you've got to see it. I will get you there. I will get you to the finish line. And if you'll trust me like that, says the Lord of heaven's armies, nothing, not even a mighty mountain will stand in Zerubbabel's way. It, and let me just... Hit pause and let me tell you, there's some things that early on will rock your world and your faith. And then as you get on down, you'll look back and say, what? why was I so worried about that little speed bump? And this is what happens is you'll face something and your strength will grow. It's not that the mountain got bigger, the God in you increased your strength and your size. So don't be afraid of those speed bumps or those mountains. Man, God is going to strengthen you and, and, and build you. But not even a mountain will get in your, will, will, will stand in Zerubbabel's well. It will become a level plain before him, and when Zerubbabel sets the final stone of the temple in place, the people will shout, may God bless it, may God bless it. Pause again, there are a lot of people that want to show up for the end of the cake to eat it. Not a lot of people want to get the flour and the eggs and all of the stuff you got. I mean, I don't know how to do that stuff. I mean, a lot of people want to show up after the building's been built. They don't want to drive a hammer. They don't want to, they don't want to pull a permit. They don't want to do that sort of thing. But let me tell you, the kid that works from age 14 to 16 to save up for that sorry little car that he or she finally gets and gets the privilege to pay insurance for and gas for will treat that sorry car a lot better than somebody just has something handed to them. Something powerful in the process that happens. We're going to show up and we're going to say, it's great. We're going to show up at the end and we're going to say, God, may God bless it, but let's make sure that we're right there in the journey. Then another message came from me. Uh, to me from the Lord. Zerubbabel is the one who laid the foundation of this temple and he will complete it. Then you will know the Lord of heaven's army has sent me. Do not despise these small beginnings for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin, to see the plumb line in Zerubbabel's hand. God loves the work. Before the work happens, you got to see it. Just with me really quick. You've got to see it to be it. You've got to see it to be it. Come on. You've got to see it to be it. Pathway, let's see what it is that God wants to do. And in doing that, you have to know that great movements aren't built on the words of critics. They're built on the backs of pioneering and explorers. So close off your ears to the people that will say, you were an accident, you're a nobody, you'll never make anything of yourself. That's a foolish thing to try. Man, just close that out and you go after that dream that God has placed in you. You pursue it, just press on through it. Don't worry about what people say. Focus on what God has called you to do. Pathway Church, let's focus on what God has called us to be. I love how Theodore Roosevelt put it in a speech he gave. There's a little piece that I'm going to lift out now. This is called The Man in the Arena. I think it really lays out who we want to be. This is the kind of people we want to be. He says this. He said, it is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. 
The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by sweat and dust and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. Pathway Church, we are not going to be a people who just coast. We're not going to be a people who just counts time and has a nice place, a nice being. We are going to be a people that believes that God, the same God that's in this book is the same God that's in this room. The same God of Jerusalem is the same God of Mobile. The same God of Mary and Joseph is the same God of Travis and Kelly. You know, the same God of those who are listed in the hall of faith are the same God that's the, the, the folks that are right here today. You are mighty in God. You are powerful. You are overcomers. The same Holy Spirit that resurrected Jesus from the dead is the same Holy Spirit that lives in us. What's going to build a movement? It's going to be to see in the Spirit, to see what God says that we can be, and then to have the confidence and the courage to walk in Him. So don't mind me if I'm a little arrogant. It's not arrogant. It's not pride. It's confidence in Jesus. It's not confidence in myself. I'm telling you, you're looking at a backwards kid that told the Lord, I'll go into ministry as long as I don't have to stand up and talk to people. But I'll tell you what, a God rises up and says, in, in me, you can do anything. There's nothing that you can't do. There's no mountain that can stand in your way. Pathway Church, let's go after that God. Let's go after that city. Let's go after our families. Yes. That's the kind of movement that we ought to be a part of. And great movements are led by great leaders. I want you to be a movement leader. In fact, I want you to look on your row. I want you to say, I'm the worship leader for this row. <laughs> this is my row. I'm, I'm here. And if nobody worships Jesus on this row, it's going to be me because these chairs are not going to cry out. Amen. We're going to lead. We're gonna, that's who we're going to do. I'm, I'm going to love my city. If I'm the only one that loves, I'm going to lead. We're going to be movement leaders. But to be a movement leader, here's some things you need to do. Number one, you need to be developed before you're discovered. A lot of people want to be discovered. A lot of people want to be on American Idol, but nobody wants to go to voice lessons. Nobody wants to play the piano three hours a day. They say the Beatles had to practice, have 20,000 hours of practice before they could become good. You just want to show up and play. That's not, that's not how it works. It don't work like that. It doesn't work like that. You know, you, I'll tell you what, I didn't just start preaching on a stage. I started preaching in nursing homes. I'd roll old people in, lock them down. They were a captive audience. They couldn't escape. And then I would preach to them and sing to them. You know, you aren't going to get great in sales. You aren't going to get great in your business just by showing up. You've got to be developed. And sometimes we say, well, why is God using that person and not me? Don't worry about that. Just take some more time in the crock pot. Take some more time to stew. Your flavor's not right yet. And maybe you do get noticed later, but I'll tell you what, if you have, we'll allow, allow God to develop you, then when you're noticed, man, you're ready for prime time. God's already set you up. Yeah, that's fine. You, you, threw, you, you thought you looked over me? No, you threw me to the wolves, but I came back as the leader of the pack, you know? Like you thought you, what you were doing for evil, yeah, that wasn't evil, that was God's plan. He took that and he is building us. He's building us. He's making us. We gotta be developed before we're discovered. Number two, we gotta be effective before we're respected. Forget the preferred parking space. Take the back space. Pathway, let's fight for the back space so that when somebody shows up for church for the first time, we got front row, front row seating. We gotta be effective before we're respected. Don't fight for the first chair. Take the last chair, and then if somebody says, oh, don't sit there, come sit here, then let God exalt you. Don't exalt yourself. It stinks to exalt yourself, and somebody say, man, you're in the wrong place, joker. Be effective first. You've got to be effective before you're respected. Number three, be courageous before you're confident. Confidence doesn't just come naturally to everybody. And I'm not going to tell you to fake it to, to, until you make it. That's not what I'm saying. But before you can get the confidence of the Lord, sometimes we just have to put our trust in the Lord and say, God, if you can work with me, you can work with anybody. So I'm just going to stiffen my knees. I'm going to step out. And you've got to come through or I'm going to fail miserably. And I promise you, that's the breeding ground for the miraculous. 
because then God gets the credit for it. Be courageous before confident. Number three, uh, or number four, be trustworthy before you're trusted. Pathway, if you, if, if let's, let's say, uh, let's say in the church, you want to serve, you want to, you want to be highly esteemed, take glory in being asked to clean the bathrooms. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's be that kind of people. That none of us are too good to do the least thing. If you're too big, if you're too big for something like that, you're too small for the kingdom of God. You want to be great? Jesus says you have to be the least. And if you will do that in time, then if, you, if you'll be trustworthy in whatever little thing that God puts in your hands, he will take care of you. And then lastly, be committed before it's completed. Because there will come a time where, man, we're tired and it doesn't look like it's working, you know, and, and there's always that guy. You know, there's always that guy that says, oh, man, things are falling apart. Man, if you would shut up, nothing would fall apart. <laughs> Just chill out. Relax. You know, if you're the lead, let me tell you, if you're, on a, if you're ever the captain of a cruise ship and something happens, don't run around looking nervous. Because everybody else is going to freak out. There's a time where you say, hey, man, there's some process going on. I don't understand everything but I'm committed and we're going to see this thing complete. We're going to see this thing work out. Hang, hang in there. Your family may not look like it. You want it to look, hang in there. God's in the process. He's in the process. He's not just in the destination. In fact, as you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you can fear no evil because his rod and his staff will comfort you. He is there. He is there. Jesus is in the margins, in the ditch. He's there. The Levite and the priest might pass you by, but Jesus will get in that ditch and he will bind up your broken heart and your wounds. And let me tell you, when you're pressed, when Pathway Church is pressed, when your family, when your business is pressed, I want you to know God has not forsaken you. He is right there with you. He is with us. He is with us. We'll be committed before it's completed. I think maybe an area of some some dangers for us is that we've experienced some wins over the years. Let's not believe our hype. Our ice isn't as cold as we think it is. We're awesome, but not that awesome. Let's don't allow hubris to get up on us. Then we say, well, we're out. No, man, God, we're humble and confident in Christ. And he's going to work this out. The only reason we have ever experienced favor or success in the past is the grace of God. Not because we're great, but because he's great. And so we're going to trust him. We're going to continue to walk that on out. Stay hungry. Stay hungry. Stay after him. Stay humble before the hand of the Lord. And if we will do that, we will see a movement of God overwhelm us. Stand with me. I want to pray for you right now. Maybe you say, Pastor, I believe I believe I can see it. I can see it and I know that God has called me to be a leader in this movement, in my family, in my business, in this community, in this church. And I'm asking that the confidence of the Lord will inspire me that I can walk in courage. If that's you, just slip up your hand right where you are. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, Jason. God bless you guys. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Now, if you say, I just need the Lord, man, I need God in everything that I'm doing, everything, I want to infuse by God's power that I'm trusting in Him and not in my own, own flesh. If that's you, just right where you are, slip up your hand. Father, you see us, you know us. You know what, as we pray, if somebody raised a hand next to you, just put a hand on their shoulder right now and minister to them. Father, do your work. Do your work in us and that we would walk in a way that's pleasing to you and the results you get all the credit for it. And Father, as we dance, as we run, Father, as we walk with one another, Father, you would be right there in the middle of us. And we'll thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give the Lord a great big hand clap. Let's bless him today. Amen.